This is Nine News Local. Good evening and welcome to this special national edition of Nine News Local. We begin in Queensland tonight, the state plunging deeper into a developing COVID crisis. The entire state told to mask up as Greater Brisbane locks down. But there are growing concerns the virus has spread through the regions. A positive case visiting Gladstone sparking frantic contact tracing. OK, good morning, Queensland. I have some really important news today. And just like that, Queensland back in the clutches of COVID-19 once again. We've had uh, 10 new cases overnight. Four of those community transmission, the growing cluster sparking a citywide lockdown, the entire state told to mask up, schools shut down as restrictions return. Thousands forced to self-isolate, including two Canberrans who visited Brisbane hotspots. We now have... Um significant community transmission and significant numbers of venues of concern. Now fears of a further outbreak, with a positive case having spent three days in Gladstone last week. The man visited six locations from the 25th to the 27th. One of the major concerns, Coles at this Stockland shopping centre. So far, around 30 close contacts have received negative results. If you're going out in public, uh, particularly to an indoors venue, wear a mask where possible. Testing at fever clinics ramping up from Gladstone to Maroochydore. Panic buyers hitting the shops, with all dock workers at Port Kembla in New South Wales now vaccinated against COVID-19. Queenslanders anxiously wait to see how far it's spread across their state. Sasha Harnipal, Nine News. A Western Victorian travel agent who relied on JobKeeper to keep her business afloat fears the industry won't survive without further government support. But help could soon be on the way, with some predicting more financial lifelines will be thrown. After 30 years working as a travel agent, Kylie Ellerton is at breaking point. I need government help. Yeah, it's going to be very, very hard. The JobKeeper wage supplement kept her business afloat for the last 12 months, but today that ended. We need JobKeeper to keep going. Treasury has estimated up to 150,000 jobs may be lost this week, but academics fear it could almost double. And as travel agents struggle to bounce back, another snap lockdown was announced, this time for Greater Brisbane, causing chaos and stress for client bookings. I've got a lawyer in our office helping me fight to get money back for our customers. The federal government has indicated targeted economic support will continue for businesses such as tourism, which relied on JobKeeper to survive. Apparently we'll know more on the 1st of April, but for some travel agencies that's too late. While previous grants and financial support packages were appreciated, the industry flagged it needed fine-tuning. I'm optimistic that uh, nearing the end of the week or early into next week uh, there'll be some positive news. Eloise Wilkinson, Nine News. A Wagga man who accidentally strangled a woman to death will spend at least a year behind bars. Ryan Ross Toyer was resentenced today, days after he was handed a punishment which didn't match the crime. Only 10 days ago, Ryan Ross Toyer walked free from the Wagga courthouse. Today, he wouldn't be going home. The former RAAF corporal will spend at least a year behind bars after choking transgender woman Melody Bruno to death in 2019. Last week, Toya was sentenced to a 22-month intensive correction order to be served in the community. Punishment which cannot be applied to manslaughter. Today, Judge Lerv acknowledged he'd made a mistake. That error was fundamental and significant, and one of which I must take ownership. Melody Bruno died on the 21st of September 2019 while having sex with Toya. Today, the original 22-month sentence was reimposed, but with the addition of jail time. Judge Lerv left frustrated. The offender in the present matter is one of the more deserving of an intensive correction order that I have encountered. Toya's own lawyer, Zach Tankard, picked up on the error. His honour was very well considered. Um, but at the end of the day, somebody's died and somebody's now in custody. Will Murray, Nine News. It's been more than two decades since Janine Vaughan vanished after a night out in Bathurst. Now the community's rallying to put up a billboard near the town in a bid to uncover answers. There's no body, no killer. And 20 years on, no peace for the family of Janine Vaughan, who are tonight desperate to get to the bottom of her disappearance. A very difficult sort of stage we're in because this 20 year journey um, has, it's become a normal for us to always just be um, thinking of Janine. Janine went missing in December 2001. She was last seen in Bathurst after leaving the dirty tav on a night out with friends. I remember the night, the day, um, 
very, very vividly. Um, I live it over and over and over. Now Janine's family is calling on the Central West community to chip in for a billboard at Bathurst that Adam believes will crack the case. I do believe that the people are in Bathurst still. Um, if they're not directly in Bathurst, they know someone that's there. Janine's family need to raise $7,000 to get the billboard up as soon as possible. Claudia Vidoljak, Nine News. Queensland residents have been left fuming. Reckless hoons caught on camera tearing up beaches and suburban streets across the state. Police say it's a tragedy waiting to happen. Carving up. This Cairns roundabout, a late night joyride, leaving locals fuming. All it takes is, you know, some innocent person to go through that roundabout and get killed and then it's not a joke anymore. Madison Wright says behaviour like this is a regular occurrence near her suburban home. She says drivers are often seen and heard. Flouting road rules. At least once a week. The incident reported and now under investigation. Police say it's extremely concerning. As soon as you put yourself behind the wheel of a vehicle, you are driving a weapon. We'll be looking at the offence of dangerous operation of a motor vehicle. On the same weekend, a driver captured here doing burnouts at Tiwa Beach. A destination often enjoyed by families. It can appear to be uh, fun at the time, but uh, all these actions do have consequences. Not only uh, legal ramifications, but potentially the loss of life. If you come across this kind of behaviour, police urge you to report it immediately. Donna Sherwood, Nine News. Hospitality businesses in the King Valley in Victoria have been hit by a spate of break-ins. Police remain on the hunt for the offender who stole guns, tools and cash during their spree. A hooded man rummages through the cellar door. Well, we all work long enough and hard enough to earn a business and to have someone come onto your premises hoping to steal from you is very disturbing and terrible. The thief rifles through drawers and cupboards at Chrismont. It's one of six businesses hit, leaving a mark on the small, tight-knit community. I guess it really crushes our spirits as well because, you know, we've had such a tough time and we're all just getting back on our feet. Thousands in cash, guns and tools were stolen during the spree late last month. Police today released the footage in the hope of catching the culprit. Really just, I guess, destroys the innocence of the King Valley. Police are looking for a man in his 20s with a thin bill who was wearing a jumper with camouflage sleeves at the time. Let's hope Victoria Police uh, can do their job and get hold of you quickly. Police are urging anyone who may have dash cam footage or any further information or who was in the King Valley at the time to contact Crime Stoppers. Claire Sienta, Nine News. Police investigators are tonight searching a burnt-out home in Canberra for clues after it was allegedly set alight early this morning, sparking a huge response from emergency services. Reporter Kimberly Keynes has more from the scene. Emergency crews were caught here to Dunlop in North Canberra just after 8 o'clock this morning after reports a fire was tearing through a home on Poor Wharf Circuit. It took five fire crews almost three hours to bring the blaze under control. Luckily, no one was home at the time, but police have confirmed they are treating this as suspicious. I can tell you fire investigators have spent most of this morning sifting through the remains to try and find out where and how it sparked. Thankfully, it was contained to the rear of the property, stopping it from spreading to neighbouring homes. A passerby this morning telling Nine News this is usually a very quiet neighbourhood. Just saw a, a, a great mine of fire trucks, basically. It was very quiet. And there's no noise whatsoever. Police have been scouring the property this afternoon and will remain here into the night, trying to work out exactly how and why this started. Celebrations have kicked off in the ACT to mark 100 years of the Royal Australian Air Force. Soil collected by RAAF Indigenous Liaison Officers from bases all over the country was today combined to represent the many lands our ancestors have fought to protect. Several commemorative events will be held this week, including a flyover of Lake Burley Griffin. Swimming is part of our cultural DNA, but concerning data revealing 65% of pool-owning Aussie parents don't have CPR qualifications. The life-saving skill is crucial in preventing drownings, and one Olympic swim coach is launching a free program to save lives. Passionate about preventing drownings, Olympic swimming coach Laurie Lawrence is determined to make a change. Pools, that's where young kids drown. 
So my mission now with the Kids Alive program is zero preschool drownings. That's what we're chasing. Sadly, 12 children drowned last year, six in backyard pools. The 10-time Olympic gold medalist coach experiencing the trauma firsthand. It's hit home to me when I've had to resuscitate a kid down at the deep end of the Tobruk pool. So it can happen to anyone. Pushing all parents and caregivers to put safety first. But if you have your CPR and can perform CPR at the point of immersion, you've got an 80% better chance of survival of that child. That's why every pool over, every parent, every grandparent should know CPR. Red Cross and Poolworks are teaming up, offering a nationwide April Pools Day campaign, giving CPR courses online for the first two weeks of April. We can get it. We can go online and snaffle those 4,000 free courses. Visit the Poolworks website for more details. Lexi Junowick, Nine News. Still ahead in Nine News Local, we're set for a seafood rush as retailers race for bumper Easter crowds. And the Rum City prepares for a 10-day festival that's all about food. No Easter is complete without a seafood feast and retailers across Australia are bracing for bumper crowds this weekend. Supplies are expected to be steady across most of Queensland, except in the far north, where tropical cyclone Niran delayed the start of the catching season. Prawns, lobsters, fish, you name it, it's on the menu this Easter. We open at 6am on Thursday and Friday and we don't close till 8pm. Mooloolaba Fish Market is expecting to sell 10 tonnes of cooked prawns on Thursday and Friday this week. Much the same in the way of fish, uh, whole fish, about 10 tonne fillet. Supplies are looking strong in Queensland's southeast for the break and prices should remain steady. It's in a couple of weeks when we could really see some mega bargains thanks to recent rain. When everything finishes running off and getting out to sea, that's when we'll start to see that the benefits of whatever benefits there are from flooding is one that uh, the sea gets replenished with, um, with nutrients. In the far north, it's a different story. Stocks are expected to be a little lower following tropical cyclone Niran. Many of the boats, due to safety, had to stay in port uh, for about a week or two after the opening of the season. But you can bank on plenty of lobster right across the country. With the demise of the Chinese export market, uh, lobster has never been more plentiful or cheaper for the Australian consumer. Sophie Ryan, Nine News. Bundaberg businesses are preparing for an influx of visitors with tickets now on sale for the Rum City's Taste Festival in June. It's hoped food lovers across the country will make the trip hungry for events after many were cancelled in 2020. A 10 day treat for your taste buds in Queensland's food bowl. Great opportunity to bring everything back to life. After a COVID cancellation last year, Bundaberg's Taste Festival is back, bringing a boost to the local economy and produce straight from paddock to plate. We can hero those um, ingredients in our region. With the help of celebrity chefs, from long lunches to a trip to the Bundaberg Rum Factory, as well as this year, an Indigenous feast. That was going to be quite a spectacular event around fire on the beach. That's probably one of my favourite. The most anticipated event is a banquet right here on the Burnett Bridge. Traffic will stop, three courses will be served and the bridge will light up. Pre-COVID, 20,000 people would enjoy the festival, 20% of that travelling from outside the region. It's hoped this year those numbers will grow, helping many local businesses in their COVID recovery. Mel Whiteman, Nine News. Stay with us. Up next in sport, NRL teams battered and bruised will have the very latest as one side prepares to wield the axe. And a home court advantage. The Taipans finally snap their losing streak. NRL clubs across the country are feeling worse for wear today, some due to injuries while others are left to do some soul searching. The Cowboys are anxiously awaiting Michael Morgan's fitness, still planning to play with him this weekend, despite reports he could be medically retired. It was a record-breaking 44-8 win for the Titans that's left the Cowboys coach at his lowest point. We just really lacked effort and drive and um, I don't think we competed hard enough for long enough, so the scoreboard reflected that. Missed tackles, poor ball control and a lacklustre attack has the coach ready to wield the axe. I just think our behaviours have become learned over the past how many 
losing seasons, you know. The Titans' next assignment, the Canberra Raiders, still reeling left with just one interchange player 15 minutes into their match, only to go down by three in a gutsy performance against the Warriors, a number of calls not going their way. Oh, we just got to play to his whistle and, and they, um, whatever he blows and whatever happens, um, happens on the field. While the Dragons await further scans on Ben Hunt's fractured leg, the club is coming to terms with just how he played for 71 minutes in their win over Manly. So he played with a broken leg and it's, it's a massive ask too and I think, I think he knew the severity of it but he obviously put the team first. Obviously that, that's going to be a massive loss for us. Aaron Buchan, Nine News. A young Australian cyclist has set a new national benchmark for her age at the Australian Track Championships. Nine News caught up with her former coach about what her gold medal win will mean for her future. Well, I'm joined here by Noel Sens from the Bendigo and District Cycling Club. Noel, tell us a little bit about how Alessi McCaig has been going at the National Track Championships in Brisbane. She's been going incredibly well. She won four gold medals up there and set three new national records. Like, it's unheard of. It's really good. And what does this mean for her from coming from a local regional club? Oh, it's a big thing for her and it makes our club a bit more famous too. But she's setting times now that Anna Mears and other riders probably weren't doing at her age. Like she's only 17 and those times are world class. So her future's big, you know, I think the Olympics and beyond. So really, really big times coming up. And she also has had a ripper season as well, as we've seen here when she won um, a race named after her great um, uncle. Yeah, that was good. She won the Frank McCaig Memorial Race. We talked about that. Yeah, she's been on a high for a long time now. It's hard to keep your form for, you know, like weeks and weeks and weeks. But she's been, every time she rides, she sets a new record. So she, she, gets, she peaks all the time. There must be a time when she can't keep doing that. But every time she does this event called the 500 Time Trial, it's a new record. So that's pretty good. And to also win three gold medals uh, for the state, that must be a, a huge achievement. Yeah, she actually won three individual gold and she won four actually because she won one in a team sprint, so four gold medals is even better. Yeah, and that's huge. And, um, you know, a lot of the other guys, they won one or two, but for her to win four, it was amazing. I don't think she'd win four. Thank you so much, Noel, for joining us. It sounds like Alessia McCaig is one to look out for in the future. The Cairns Taipans are restoring faith in their NBL 21 campaign, snapping their five-game losing streak with a win over Adelaide. It seems a home clash was all the snakes needed. Coach Mike Kelly astounded by the team's energy. Slam dunks. This Cam Oliver, you want to get him involved? Big threes. The Taipans came home with a point to prove. And with shots like these... Kenny, half court, ah! hey! It was well worth the wait. It was good to see that the fact that uh, everybody in this community has our back. They're so excited to come to the games. After seven weeks away, the snakes were itching for a clash in the tropics. The guys were stoked to be home all week. We all were. And uh, we've had really good energy at practice. Star forwards Madruk Deng and Kuat Noi watching on the sidelines ruled out with injuries. But that only fueled their determination, shooting down concerns about disharmony in the team soaring to a 14-point victory. The more we scrap and fight and grind, um, the more good things are going to happen for us. So we're just going to Try to execute better. For Cam Oliver, marking his 50th game with fellow import Scott Machado, it's been a time for personal growth. I took a, a big look in the mirror this past week, you know, and um, those past two games that I played, um, I wasn't satisfied with myself. He was more vocal, um, telling his teammates where they need to be. In, in a positive way. With this bounce back, the Snakes are stronger than ever. This energy they'll have to unlock again to try and take down Melbourne United on Friday. Katarina Stefanovic, Nine News. When Nine News Local returns, Gavin's in with all your weather details. Good evening, hope you're well on this Monday. Hope you had a fabulous weekend. It's quite an impressive satellite image over the nation at the moment due to the fact that there's very little going on. We have a low that is moving across the southern Tasman. That's generating this fresh new southerly that's going to burst right along the east coast, just clipping mostly eastern Victoria. Overall, very quiet, particularly throughout Queensland for this time of the year. We've got a lot of storm activity occurring right throughout the tip of the territory, but generally it is clear skies that are dominating the nation at the moment. And that is because of this massive high that is centering itself over Victoria, 
making for some spectacular autumn conditions right throughout the southeast. That is Victoria, clear and calm throughout New South Wales. But along the coast, we have this fresh southeasterly influence. Now, with the passing of that low, that is going to generate swell along mostly the southern New South Wales coast. And the southeasterly winds will be very consistent, and that is going to trigger a few showers along the Queensland coast, but inland generally fine. So let's begin first of all right throughout Western Victoria, lovely conditions throughout the Mallee, it is comfortable, it is clear, starting to see morning fog and mist throughout the Wimmera but burning off into the low to mid 20s and very nice throughout the southwest. Partly cloudy skies due to that consistent southerly influence that is pushing in across northern and central Victoria, Ballarat tops of 19 degrees, Bendigo you've got 22 uh, throughout the eastern half of Victoria, also quite stunning for this time of the year. Temperatures here only maxing out around 20 degrees right throughout the Bay Area and that includes Melbourne. Central Victoria low to mid 20s stunning right throughout the North Country, the North East. Gippsland also partly cloudy skies and generally light winds. Let's take a look at southern New South Wales and the capital. There's that southerly along the coast keeping temperatures down only maxing out uh, into the low 20s. Uh, the capital tops of 22 fine clear relatively calm. We've got some cool and nights when it's a little bit fresh during the morning and it's the same right throughout the central west plains down to the single digits around parks and forbes topping out into the mid 20s right across the tablelands trying to get out of the teens but lovely conditions prevail for this time of the year let's move north to the sunshine state we've got plenty of that inland but along the coast this new south easterly is going to create just a little more cloud cover and we've got an isolated shower or two that'll be pushing in over the sunshine coast, the Fraser Coast, around Bundaberg, topping out about 28 degrees with a slight chance of a shower. Inland, right across the coal fields and the highlands, it's going to be generally fine. For the northern tropics, enjoying some good times at the moment. Right throughout the Whit Sundays, we may pick up a shower or two, but north of Townsville to Cairns, generally fine conditions prevail. Have yourself a wonderful night. And that's your special national edition of Nine News Local for this Monday. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll continue to bring you local news throughout the week. I'm Samantha Heathwood from All The Team. Good night.